everyone, my name is Lisa and I'm the Veed Vegan because I'm Viet and I'm vegan and today we're making instant pot recipes, plural, because today's video is a collab video with Produce Made Simple. You guys have probably heard me talk about Produce Made Simple before. It's a website that basically educates people on how to eat more fruits and veg and produce in general with lots of easy recipes. They have a lot of vegan recipes. I've been working with them for like four or five years, like a long time. So I love that website. I actually use it a lot for whenever I need to figure out like how long something needs to be cooked for or like what potato is good for what application. If you guys want to check out Produce Made Simple, I'll leave a link down below. They're a really, really helpful resource, especially when you like go to a grocery store and you're like, I don't know what this vegetable is. I don't know how to cook it. They show you how to cook it in many different ways. So I have two Instant Pot recipes for you guys. One is on my channel, which is this Instant Pot version of pho, and one on the Produce Made Simple uh, channel, which is a vegan black bean soup. So uh, let's just get into it. I've actually made a pho recipe on my channel before, but it was on the stove top. It took a couple hours. I had to like, I lost a lot of liquid when I was cooking it on the stove. And you know what? It was really delicious, but I want to kind of change it up a little bit, add a little bit more oomph to it. The first step to developing the flavor of pho is to first char your vegetables. I have some Ontario grown onions and some daikon here and we also have some cabbage. Daikon and onion and cabbage are all sort of like sweet and savory bases for vegetable broth so we're actually going to put all these in the pot right now. I charred these on an, a cast iron skillet. Um, it was just dry. I just basically seared each side until it got that kind of blackened texture flavor. <laughs> I also added cabbage this time because I wanted kind of like a buttery sweetness. So I have these beautifully charred cabbages. I actually kind of want to just eat them on their own, but I will save them for the broth. So we're going to put these all in. So this is some more ginger. This is about one, two, like seven inches of ginger, I guess. It's like kind of small, so it's not like the same size as like your big ginger, probably about like four or five inches of regular size ginger. I also charred this as well on the cast iron skillet uh, just to give it extra flavor. So you want all these charred bits in there because delicious. The thing that's gonna add like a lot of like umami flavor is some mushrooms here. So I have also cooked these mushrooms in a little bit of oil and just cooked them until they're nicely browned. And that's just gonna add more of this like umami flavor profile to the pho. So now we're gonna add some water. I'm just gonna fill it until it's allowed to, like up to the two-third max line. So about two liters of water. Now we're gonna press everything down into the water. Really put everything under the water so it'll submerge and it'll cook through. We're gonna cover this up. All right, so now we wanna put it on soup for 15 minutes and that's it. Or make sure you wanna put this on ceiling so that it'll create pressure. That's pretty much it. So while this cooks, I'm actually gonna prepare the rest of the ingredients and uh, I'll see you when this is done and we're ready to serve up some pho. So we're back. We have our pho. It smells very nice and pho-y. So we're gonna release the pressure. Um, it's been chilling for about 40 minutes, which is usually long enough for it to release the pressure naturally, but I'm gonna do this just in case. This sounds like it's ready. I think I've loosened up any dry oat flakes from this. Ooh, that is a very juicy. Oh my God, it's a very like dark, beautiful brown color. Now we're gonna fish out all of the solids out of here because we just want the broth. Oh my God, it smells so good. You can uh, cut up these vegetables and eat them if you want to. All right, pretty much the only things that are left in there are the shrooms. Now for the final step of what makes this soup taste like pho, which is a bunch of spices. So we have five spices here. I actually have some regular cinnamon instead of the typical Vietnamese cinnamon, which is called uh, cassia bark. We're gonna put these in this nut bag, and then we're gonna let this sit in the nut bag and cook in this broth for like five, 10 minutes, because you don't want it to taste really, really strongly of the spices. You just want it kind of like lightly perfumed in the broth. So while that's steeping, we're gonna prepare the rest of the bowl. So we have our rice noodles here. We have some bun pho, which is uh, specifically flat rice noodles that are made for pho. They're kind of like thin, but not like super, super flat and wide. They're just kind of like regular shape. I actually have a video about a noodle trick to like separate the noodles a little bit easier. I didn't really bother doing it this time. The trick to having delicious noodles is letting them dry out a little bit. Not like too much, but putting them in a colander and letting them drain so that it doesn't get like soggy at the bottom. So we've got our noodles. We have some other accoutrement. So we have some fried tofu. This is tofu that I got from my local tofu shop. It's just in the Mississauga Chinatown. This is like a yellow sign. I've showed this in another video before. Um, I'll link it in the corner if you guys want to see exactly like the shop. We're going to put some of this in. Fried onion and mushroom tofu. 
We have some um, which is like a Vietnamese sausage that has kind of like a sweet, not quite hammy flavor, but like, I don't like ham, but I really like this stuff. Um, it's soy based. And I also got this from the market that's at the Mississauga Chinatown. Another thing that I found, this is fried gluten. It just says gluten. And it's just like fried seitan essentially. It's water, wheat flour, and vegetable oil. Um, and I find that when in soup, it actually kind of like melts down. It has like kind of like a chicken skin sort of texture. You totally don't need this. It's fun. Next we have our herbs. This is called culantro. I don't know if it's related to cilantro at all, but in Vietnamese culture, they consider this a very like cooling plant or herb. I think that means like alkaline. It's a very alkaline food. Rip it up, put it in. So before I go any further, I'm actually just gonna give this a taste to see where we're at. That's really flavorful. And that's without salt. So now I'm gonna add some mushroom broth powder. Um, if you guys wanna know what it looks like, the package that I buy, this is the one that I get. So we're gonna use some mushroom broth powder. That's just gonna add a little bit more seasoning, more umami and more flavor to this broth. Um, you can just use regular salt if you want to, but mushroom broth powder just adds a whole nother dimension. I'm also gonna take out these spices. You can leave it in for a little bit longer if you want to, but it just needs to be like lightly fragrant of it. Um, I've actually shared a bunch of different packages of mushroom broth seasoning at the store. Um, in my Insta stories. If you wanna check that out, I'll leave the link for my Instagram down below with my other social media. So it's in my highlights if you guys wanna see that. One more taste. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. I actually wanna add a little bit more. So about three and a half tablespoons. Next we're gonna add a little bit of basil here. This is some Thai basil. This is another one of those like classic Vietnamese herbs that go in pho to just give it more more oomph, you know? And then we have some mung beans here. Um, if you had thought ahead, you would steam these, but I didn't, so just having them raw. Most people, I think, steam them just for like safety, but whatever. And now we're gonna spoon out some of our delicious pho broth. The key to pho is broth. The key to any Vietnamese dish really is the broth. And for those who might think that the charring can be avoided or you can skip that or you can just, you know, just have it raw. The charring is what gives this whole broth that golden color. All right, it's time to taste test. So we're gonna actually squeeze some lime. So in the black bean video on Produce Made Simple, I showed you guys how I cut my limes to get the ultimate juice, no reamer, no finger Olympics necessary, especially if you have kind of like hand issues or like mobility issues like I do when it comes to your hands. Stir everything together and dig in. You could also put in some hoisin sauce. Um, all hoisin sauce is actually vegan. Um, there's just like a vegetarian one without any root vegetables because that's like related to like Buddhism. That's like Taoist Buddhist. We're gonna try some of this gluten, fried gluten. Mmm. It's kind of eating like soggy bread, but it's surprisingly very good. It's a lot more dense than I expected though. All right, we got some broth, we got some noodles. Mmm. The lime juice really just makes it. Ugh. So yeah, if you guys want the recipe for this Instant Pot Pho, I'll leave a link down below, as well as the, the link to the black bean soup recipe that I put on producemadesimple.ca. Go check it out, go check out their channel, go check out the video that I'm in. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy this video. Be sure to click like, comment, subscribe. It really helps me out, uh, helps my channel, you know, get those engagement things, and also do the same for Pros Made Simple. That'd be pretty cool. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you guys have a delicious day. Bye. So we're gonna do a little thing, thing. So now we're just gonna cover this up. That's not a lid. That's a, that's a skillet.